this is a review of the iconic entrance set. This model is polished brass. It's called a polished brass knob on the packet. Has it an adjustable back set, 60 to 70 mil, three C4 keys, suitable for door thickness, 35 to 55 millimeters. It says on the back, may you notice, know, just says Romac Hardware Distributors Australia. Proprietary Limited, and it's a locked salt at uh, Bunnings. This one come from uh, Bunnings store in Brisbane. This lock is the polished brass version. It also comes in a uh, silver or a chrome finish. The polished brass uh, lock is fairly shiny. It's not a bad finish on it. Out of the packet, it has three keys. It also has an accessories packet with all the screws that you need. The two main screws that hold the lock together are still in the lock body. It has a polished brass strike to be fitted to the edge of the door. It comes with all the parts you need to fit the lock to a standard wooden door. This is a fairly cheap lock. It costs $10.50 at Bunnings. of the packet it seems to work okay the keys go in and turn keys turn the tailpiece on the back looks like it locks and unlocks okay there is a fair amount of play in the handle when it's locked but that's fairly normal for a tie bolt type lock such as this the outside handle is held together by four tabs the lock is put together and then they are bent over to hold the outside handle assembly on. You can see the four tabs and that basically holds the whole lock together when it's on the door. The latch has a polished brass cover plate and it's covered with a plastic cover which is easily removed. Selecting between 60 and 70 mils for your back set is fairly simple. Just pull the hub of the latch in and out to set it to either 60 or 70. It's fairly easy to withdraw the latch by hand, although it is a little bit grabby in places. When it's on the door, it's fairly smooth. You don't notice it that much. The latch has a dead latching pin. The dead latching pin is designed to not let the latch open when it's engaged in the strike when the door is closed. The door can just close normally, but when the, when the dead latching pin is pushed in, the latch will not open unless you turn the handle on the lock. The dead latching pin on this latch can be pushed in about 5 millimeters, which is quite a bit for a latch. The problem with pushing the dead latching pin in is that if you can get a gap between the door and the door frame, you can push the actual latch back with like a credit card or a piece of thin steel and open the door. So yeah, 5 millimeters is quite a big gap. It makes the, you know, the, the latch, which is about 13 millimeters long uh, the part that's sticking into the door it takes that down to about seven millimeters so if you can get a seven millimeter gap in the door you can potentially push the latch back the inside knob is held together by lugs very similar to the outside knob. The inside might not seem so critical for security reasons, but if you're fitting it to a heavy door, especially if it's got a door closer fitted to it, pulling on that inside handle you know, it could cause problems. It could even rip the handle off. The keys are non-descriptive. They've got no branding on them. They are a C4 type key, which should be compatible with Lockwood locks. We'll just check and see if a key will actually go into a Lockwood cylinder.
So yeah, the keys slide into the Lockwood cylinder, so you should be able to use the keys to match Lockwood locks or the Lockwood style key, which is common in Australia. Okay, I fitted the lock to a door to test out a few basic um, security requirements it should have, or at least a few basic requirements you would expect in any lock set sold in Australia. Okay, let's see if it's got any resistance to lock picking. We're just using very basic hand picking tools to try to pick the lock. Nothing special, just simple rake pick to see if it'll open up. So I just picked the lock twice. Yeah, resistance to lock picking about five seconds, and that's being generous. That's not very good. Okay, this is a bump key. It's just a simple way that criminals use to break into houses these days. Let's see if the lock's got any resistance to bump keys. My bump key test is very, very basic. It's just using a cut down key blank and a screwdriver. You know, the most basic bump key setup you can find. I'm setting the standards very low for this lock. This lock has absolutely no resistance to bump keys. In fact, it's one of the easiest locks I've ever seen to bump open. I just bumped it open twice with you know, three whacks of the back end of a screwdriver. Just too easy. Okay, this is just a uh, simple test to see if it's got any strength at all in the actual lock. I'm just going to see if I can open it with my bare hands. It's uh, pretty much a basic requirement of any entrance lock set that you can't open it with your hands. I'm just using an old rag here so I don't cut myself because it's got sharp edges. Pretty much a epic failure regarding pulling strength of the lock. I'm just going to have a quick look at why the lock failed pretty much every test I put it through. The first and most obvious reason it failed is because the lugs that hold the handle on are just not strong enough. The metal that they use is thinner than other locks. Also, the play in the handle allows you to pull each of the lugs out when you turn the handle in a circular motion and apply force to it. You can put pressure on each of the lugs one by one. Let's take a look at the lock cylinder assembly. The first thing you notice about the lock cylinder is that it has a die cast casing. Die casting generally gives much worse tolerances than machined brass.
taking the barrel out of the cylinder, the first thing you notice is that there are four slots in the side of the barrel. What are they for? Um, well, I'm guessing that they're to save brass. A few cents maybe? One cent? Half a cent? Of brass? There's no other reason to have those slot cutouts in the barrel. In fact, they do weaken the barrel, especially along pin edges. You've got holes for the pins, and then you've got a slot. It just makes the whole barrel weaker. It's a bit hard to see the pins in this video, but the pin tops are not flat like in most locks. They're rounded. Round pins make the lock easier to operate, maybe, especially if you've got very bad tolerances, but it also makes the lock much easier to pick and much easier to bump. That's why our bump test worked so well and our lock picking was very easy. To top it off, the top pins in the lock, which are the other sides, are also rounded. There's no nice flat bottoms, they're all rounded. In fact, the bottom pins in this lock are rounded on the top and bottom. There's no difference. You can insert them in the lock either way and they still sort of work. But you know, for security in a lock, you need a flat top on the pin. The pin should be rounded on the bottom to ride up and down the profile of the keycap. A check of tolerances between the plug and the cylinder show that there is about a 0.6mm difference. This will make for quite a bit of play in the lock barrel, making the lock much easier to pick and bump. play between the lock barrel and the cylinder is quite evident. The locking actuator for this lock is made from quite thin pressed steel. An attack from a tool such as a pair of multi grips or vice grips would have this lock open in seconds. I doubt the pressed steel actuator would give very much resistance, although it would seem the lock actuator is not the weakest part of the design. So what's the final verdict of this lock? Obviously it fails every test. In fact this lock should probably have a warning label letting people know just how insecure it is. A lock that you can open with your bare hands from the outside of the lock is not really something you want fitted to your house.